On Tuesday, Ohio voters emphatically rejected a proposal to legalize cannabis in the state, 64 to 36 percent. But due to the monopolistic nature of the planned system, it's unclear whether people actually voted against legalization or simply rejected the business model. Instead of allowing registered businesses to sell cannabis or implementing a government-controlled system of distribution, methods already in place in other states with legal weed, Ohio's legalization initiative dubbed Issue 3, attempted to give exclusive industry rights to a small cartel of investors known as Responsible Ohio. The measure was so controversial, pro-POC groups, including the Drug Policy Alliance and the Marijuana Policy Project, refused to endorse it. Normal did lend its endorsement, but expressed apprehension about the intended monopoly. According to Ethan Nadelman, executive director of the Drug Policy Alliance, government-approved oligopolies may make sense with respect to public utilities and national security. But marijuana? There's something about a constitutionally mandated oligopoly for an agricultural product that just seems un-American. Polls before the vote, while split on the issue, predict the possibility of defeat. For example, in a University of Akron survey, a majority of participants agreed that while legalization is a good idea, a monopoly is a bad idea. To further cement the measure's loss, Ohio residents also voted Tuesday on whether to ban monopolies a question added by the state legislator in an attempt to block Issue 3. This measure passed. But despite the vote results, according to Douglas Berman, a professor of law at Ohio State University, the cannabis reform community has to be ecstatic to see that even in a purple state like Ohio, the advocacy against reform wasn't marijuana is this evil weed, it was don't trust those monopolists to legalize weed. According to Mason Teaver, director of communications for the Marijuana Policy Project, Ohio choosing to uphold the status quo is ultimately inconsequential for the U.S. as a whole. Quote, The outcome in Ohio does not reflect where the nation stands or the direction in which it is heading when it comes to marijuana policy. It only reflects where Ohio voters stand on a specific and rather unique proposal. It will not have any bearing on the outcomes of the initiatives that we expect to appear on other states' ballots in 2016. These initiatives will also benefit from heightened voter turnout during a presidential election year. The more voters that turn out, the more support we tend to see for marijuana policy reform. He added that Election Day was relatively uneventful this year, but next year it will be truly historic. While Ohio may not have legalized cannabis, two Michigan communities voted Tuesday to decriminalize the plan. Furthermore, ballot measures are in the works in 16 different states to legalize cannabis next year, according to the Washington Post, including California, Florida, Arizona, and Maine. While not all will get enough support to go before voters, many of them undoubtedly will. Two other states, Vermont and Rhode Island, may also legalize cannabis, but through legislative action rather than popular vote. 